So now if you think about it, we'll have, or if you see it, if you can see, we can we have all the values stored in the, in the variables. All we have to do is just print it out. Now since this function, this chapter is all about functions, let's create a function to print out the details so we don't have, you know, so, so, we, so we have all just functions here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and define one more function. I'm going to call it print details. Now this function is going to need all of these variables, all the values here installed in these variables to print out all the details, okay? So first of all, it's going to need a user amount of purchase. It's going to need the state tax. It's going to need a county tax. It's going to need the total tax and the total sale. Now, once again, I've exceeded this line here. So I am going to break it somewhere around here. And before you break any line, you have to type in the backslash and enter. Okay. All right, so once we are done, um, what we want to do is go ahead and print details. Now I'm going to I'm calling this function. Whoops, whoops, whoops. We didn't define what's going to happen in the function, so let's just delete that. Before that, okay. So in this function, these are just the argument. These are just the parameters, right? What's going to happen? What we want to happen in this function is we want it to print out these details. So let's go ahead and um, create what's going to t um, happen in this function when it's called. So we want to go ahead and print what has been given to us in as arguments. Okay, so we want to go ahead and print those out. So the first thing is user amount of purchase, right? So let's let's pass. Okay, let's see. Let's pass as a separate argument. Okay, as individual arguments. Um. As, let's, let's pass as in individual arguments what we want to print, okay, into the print function. So the first argument I want to pass into the print function is the string user amount of purchase. User amount of purchase, right, and I'm going to put a colon. I'm going to concatenate it with the formatted version of what has been given to us, user amount of purchase here. Now the format function takes in two arguments. It takes in first what you want to format, which is this, the user amount of purchase, and how you want it formatted in double quotes, basically a format specifier. Now because user amount of purchase is a float, it's going to be a float. I want it formatted as a float, so I'm going to type in F for float. I want it rounded to two decimal places, so I'm going to specify the precision right in right before the, the type or before the F. So because if, if I want to, if I want to format it to two, two decimal places, I'll type in point 0.2 for two decimal places. If I wanted wanted to round it to, to three decimal places, I'll say point 0.3. But I want to format it to two decimal places, I'll say point 0.2. Okay, so I also, since it's an amount of purchase, I also want commas where necessary, like a comma where necessary. So if, so that so so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and put it a comma right in front of the point 0.2, right in front of the precision. Okay before the, even the float. So right in front of the position, I'm going to put a comma. And what this is going to do is if the, if the user amount of purchase is, let's say, a million, it's going to automatically put commas where necessary. So a million is going to be displayed as 1, 000, 000. If it's 5,000, it's going to display it as 1, so as 5, 000. It's going to automatically put commas where necessary. And the comma goes before the position and before the type. Okay. Also, I want a dollar sign in front of the amount. So I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign right here before the amount. Now the format function returns a string, so it's, this this uh, com the interpreter wouldn't have any problem trying to concatenate a string to a string, because the format function returns a string, so that's fine. So that is going to be the first argument of the print function. I'm going to put the comma here for the second argument of the print function. Don't worry, we'll fix this line ex exceeding thing later on. Um, actually, that we should we should do it now, but I don't want to. Con oh, you know, we should do it now. All right, so because I don't want to confuse. Um, yeah, l let's just do it now. All right. So because it's exceeding this line, we want to break it, right? So, but let's be careful where we want to break it. We can break it somewhere here. And before we break it, we put a backslash and hit enter. Okay. So this whole thing is the first argument of the print function. Okay. The second argument is basically going to be something similar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing and change the values. So. 
paste this um oops oops undo it let's just make sure we copy it right um yep yeah. okay so the second argument is basically going to be let's see okay we 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 have to end up breaking this too but um Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's, uh, let, let's let's undo this and try to break it well because I guess now like there's a lot of space here. So um, I'm not sure if doing it here it's not going to work. Should it, uh, let's see. I, I'm not sure if doing here doing it here will work. I don't think so. I don't think it will work. But we can try. Um, we will try later on. But for now, let's just stick with um what we're doing before, and then if. It's too messy, we'll fix it. Okay. Oops. Okay. So we broke it somewhere around here. So let's just do that. All right, the second argument is going to be something similar, so I'll paste it. It's going to be the state tax, right? So we're just going to display state tax. And we're concatenating, concatenating it with a formatted version of state tax. Also formatted to two small places. And um, as a float with a dollar sign, commas where necessary. Okay. And the next thing is going to be, the next argument is going to be something similar. So I'm going to paste it. I have it copied, copied in the clipboard. So that's going to be a, the county tax. That's much, yeah, that's fine. The county tax. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to county tax. Concatenated with the formatted version of county tax, which we were given here. Then the fourth argument is going to be something similar. So total tax, change the string to total tax. Concatenated with the formatted version of total tax. Then the last value is going to be total sale which is concatenated with the formatted version of total sale formatted to two decimal places also all right so when we call this print function that's what it's going to do it's going to take these argument and it's going to display this way also we want to go ahead and separate each of these okay well, first of all, yeah. So by default, when you pass in arguments into the print function like this way, separated by commas. So this whole thing here is one argument separated by a comma, and this whole thing here, or this whole line here, is another argument separated by a comma. And this whole line here is another argument. So when you pass in arguments into the print function this way, by default, yes, they are displayed with a space separate in each of them. So it's going to basically display user amount of purchase is this amount, space. State tax is this amount, space. So whatever you type or the, the individual argument you pass into the print function are displayed with a space by when, you know, we, yeah, with a space. So we can override that, we override that and then change the separator of the print function, okay, of this print function to a new line character so that each time we have one thing, one line display. It goes to the next line. It's separating them with, with a new line. It goes to the next line and separates the, the other one. So the backslash n together is the new line character. Backslash n together is the new line character. When the interpreter sees the backslash n, it takes the position from where it's at to the next line. So anything that comes after the, anything that comes after each argument is displayed after that argument. So anything that comes after this argument. Is displayed on the next line after on on the next line okay after this argument and anything that comes after this argument is displayed on the next line after this argument so basically it's separating each of these arguments with a new line character with a new line separating them instead of a space the default so we were overwritten the default space okay so now over here in main what we have to do is go ahead and call the print details function. The print details function again needs 
one, two, three, four, five arguments. We have all the five arguments in user amount of, of purchase, state tax, county tax, total tax, and total sale. So let's go ahead and pass all of them in here. So the print details is going to need the user amount of purchase, the state tax, the county tax, the total tax, and the total sale. Okay, now we exceed in this line, so let's go ahead and break it somewhere here. Just space. Back, um, backslash before you break any line, hit enter. So now the print, de the print details is going to take this argument and then print it this way for us. So now we're done. Let's run the program and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this in where I save all the Python programs on the desktop. Python chapter 5. And I'll save this. I'll create a new folder for this one and I'll call it. What is it called? Um, what is this program called? I forgot. Um, hold on. The. <laughs> It disappeared. Um, hold on. Okay, I tried to save that. I think it's hitting somewhere. It, it's either it's hitting or it's trying to load up. Okay, so let's try this. Hopefully, it doesn't crash on me. Sometimes it does crash on me. Okay. Let's save this as. Okay, so let me cancel this and try to save because I think it was trying to mess up. I'm, I'm hoping that it pops up. Anyway, it it's 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 act, it acts weird sometimes. Okay, so let's just let's just save as. Okay, so let's save. Oh, oh, I tried to save it as untitled untitled five for some reason. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead later on. And you know, as a matter of fact, let me just do that now. Python. Um, I don't want to delete it, otherwise I might may, may lose the program. Okay, so let's first save it first. Let's save it as. What? But what is it called? I forgot. I forgot. I'm so sorry. It's sales tax program refactoring. Okay. Okay, so I'll first of all create a folder for it. Sales tax program refactoring. And then I'll just copy this. It won't allow me to copy it for some reason. All right, so I'll create a folder and I'll save it as sales tax re refactoring.py. Oh, sales tax program refactoring.py. Let's see what happens. I'm running a bunch of stuff down here, so that's why it's taking time to load. So, come on. Either either it's trying to load, um, run the other one, or let, let's. Oh oh oh. <laughs> It's uh, it's funny because I did the same thing in the first program in chapter five. Um, <laughs> I created the function in main. I just defined it, but I didn't call it. So that's why nothing is happening. I thought the program was actually behaving funny. The I the ID was behaving funny. So so again, um, not again, but I, it, it this can happen multiple times. So many times where you define a function and you don't call it and you expect something to happen. So over here we def we we written our program in main, but we have to call the main function since it's just a function that's defined. We have to go ahead and call it so all these things can run, all these functions can be called, and this this program can act to or run the way it's supposed to run. So I'm going to go ahead and now call main this way, and then now it should work. So let's go ahead and debug this. See if you have any bug. Okay, so now we can see that it's kicking in. We can see it's trying to. First, kick in this ask amount of purchase, and then it's trying to store it in user amount. So, let's type in let's say fifty dollars, and then hit enter, 
and then now we can see that it's printing out the details it's printing out the user amount of purchase which is fifty dollars the state tax which is two point two dollars and fifty cents the county tax which is the dollar twenty five total tax three seventy five and total sale it's adding the total tax to it which is fifty three point seven five and we can see the total tax is basically state tax plus county tax, which is three seventy-five. That's correct. And the amount of purchase is fifty dollars. So that's the total sale. So we can see it's working. The only thing I want to do is let's see. I want to separate or put a new line in between the 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 input, which is where the user typed in fifty, and the, the display, which is um these these details. We can do that in the print details function before it prints anything we can just say backslash n okay so again the backslash n is a new line character when the interpreter sees this it takes the, the position from where it's at to the next line so anything that comes after that new line character is, is displayed on that next line so this this is one way to fix it so if you if we try that and we type in let's say for 45 dollars now we can see there's a new line here and the details are here Another way to do the same thing is to take away this new line, and when you call the when you call the print function this way. Now we are doing this in a print, print details. We've called it here, so it's going to work. If you call the print function this way, and you type in something, and you run it, it's going to do exactly what you've told it to do. It's going to go ahead and print what you told you told it to print over here. Okay, but guess what? Once it it's done printing what you've told it to print, it's going to take the 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 position from where it's at right now, the end of this line to the next line. So anything that comes after it is going to be displayed on that on this next line. So that's why when this print function came after this, it was displayed on the next line after this line. That's because because that's because by default the print function works that way. It's it goes ahead to print what you've told it to print, but it ends with a new line character. Meaning once it's printed what you've told it to print, it's going to take the, the position from where it's at to the next line. So anything that comes after this print function is displayed on the next line. That's how the print function works by default. So one way to simulate a new line is to basically call the print function by by typing in nothing. So basically you are telling the print function, hey, print nothing, uh, n nothing, right? But when it goes, so basically it's going to go ahead and print nothing over here. It's going to print nothing, but because the print function works by default, by adding a new line character after after it okay the print function always works like that anytime you tell it to print something it's going to print it but it's going to take the case or the position from where it's at okay to the next line so anything that comes after it is displayed on that next line so over here we've told it to print nothing so it's going to go ahead and print nothing here but by default the print function takes the position from where it's at right now to the next line so anything that comes after it is going to be displayed on that next line so anything that comes after it over here, so in this case, this is going to be displayed on the next line after this. Okay, so if we run this again, that's also another way to create a new line and type in say 67. We can see we still have the new line. So that's one way to do it. Or you can stick with the new line character this way, and that will also fix it like we saw. I'll just try it one last time, $1. We can see one dollar five cents, three cents, eight cents, one dollar seven cents. Okay, so now we've done that. We've basically been able to m m modularize the program. We've broken it into into subtasks, and then we've we put put them all in functions, and we've called them in main, called main itself, and it's the same program but on using functions. Okay, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. All right, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, as always, and I'll see you next time with the next program. Okay, bye-bye.